As healthcare professionals, we have a responsibility to uphold ethical standards in our practice. From 1946 to 1947, after the Second World War had ended, the Nazi physicians were put on trial for the inhumane medical experiments conducted in concentration camps on prisoners without their consent, resulting in countless deaths and injuries. These trials were held in the city of Nuremberg, Germany. Named after the city, the Nuremberg Code was created to prevent such abuses from happening again and to ensure that medical research is conducted ethically. This code consists of 10 key principles that guide ethical medical research. The first principle talks about how it is important to completely inform the participants taking part in an experiment about the purpose, pros and cons of the study. Unlike how the prisoners in Nuremberg were experimented on without consent, the Nuremberg Code ensured that henceforth anyone taking part in an experiment will have to give informed consent only after they have understood every aspect of the study. It states that, number one, the voluntary informed consent of the human subject is absolutely essential. The duty and responsibility for ascertaining the quality of the consent rests upon each individual who initiates, directs or engages in the experiment. It's a personal duty and responsibility which may not be delegated to another with impunity. Next, when you choose to experiment, you must ensure that the results you want to achieve cannot be achieved in any other way and hence you chose to go with this experiment. It also talks about when choosing to experiment, especially when it involves humans, we should ensure that the study will actually produce insightful findings that will not only benefit the participants but also society in general. It states that, number two, the experiment should be such as to yield fruitful results for the good of society, unprocurable by other methods or means of study, and not random and unnecessary in nature. According to the third principle, the research must be based on a sound scientific justification. It could be based on the results of experiments on animals or on understanding the cause of the disease on which we will base our experiment. It states that, Number three, the experiment should be so designed and based on the results of animal experimentation and a knowledge of the natural history of the disease or other problem under study that the anticipated results will justify the performance of the experiment. Coming to the fourth principle, remember that it is very important to respect the participants of your experiment. They should not be subjected to any situation during the study that might cause them any form of discomfort physically or mentally. It states that, number four, the experiment should be so conducted as to avoid all unnecessary physical and mental suffering and injury. Along with respect, it is also important to protect your participants and not subject them to an experiment when you believe there is even a slightest chance that they may die or get injured during the study period. The whole point of the Nuremberg Code becomes meaningless if we put the people at risk despite knowing the outcome. It states that, number five, no experiment should be conducted where there is an a priori reason to believe that death or disabling injury will occur, except perhaps in those experiments where the experimental physicians also serve as subjects. It is a known fact that every experiment might have certain small risks that the participants would already be informed about, but you must ensure that the risk is minimized to prevent exposing the subjects to unnecessary harm. It states that, number six, the degree of risk to be taken should never exceed that determined by the humanitarian importance of the problem to be solved by the experiment. We've already discussed how it's important to respect our subjects and protect them from any life-threatening scenarios. For this, proper initiatives must be taken and ensure that adequate facilities are provided to our participants. It states that, number seven, proper preparations should be made and adequate facilities provided to protect the experimental subject against even remote possibilities of injury, disability, or death. All this while, we discussed our subjects. But are there any specifications regarding the investigator conducting the study? It must always be ensured that the investigators are qualified as it's important to have the proper skills at every stage of the experiment so that they can engage in the study. It states that, number eight, the experiment should be conducted only by scientifically qualified persons. The highest degree of skill and care should be required through all stages of the experiment of those who conduct or engage in the experiment. Coming to the ninth principle, 
It talks about the basic right of every subject to voluntarily participate in a study. If at any stage, the participant feels that they have reached a stage beyond which they cannot continue with the experiment, they should be free to withdraw at any time without penalty. It states that, number nine, during the course of the experiment, the human subject should be at liberty to bring the experiment to an end if he has reached the physical or mental state by continuation of the experiment seems to him to be impossible. The last principle basically states that the investigator in charge should be prepared to terminate the experiment if, at any stage, they have reason to believe the experiment can injure or be deadly for the patients. It states that, number 10, during the course of the experiment, the scientist in charge must be prepared to terminate the experiment at any stage if he has probable cause to believe, in the exercise of good faith, superior skill and careful judgment required by him, that a continuation of the experiment is likely to result in injury, disability or death to the experimental subject. To make it easier for you to remember the course, let's remember these keywords as displayed on the screen significant for each code. Number 1. Informed consent. Number 2. Fruitful results. Number 3. Scientific justification. Number 4. Respect. Number 5. Protection of subjects. Number 6. Minimal risk. Number 7. Proper preparations. Number 8. Qualified investigators. Number 9. Voluntary participation. And number 10. Termination. To conclude, the Nuremberg Code is an essential framework for ethical medical research and practice, including dentistry. As healthcare professionals, we must adhere to these principles to ensure that our patients are treated with respect and dignity and protected from unnecessary harm. For more such videos, download our app and watch videos seamlessly and learn through visually engaging mind maps. We hope we made public health dentistry slightly better for you. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel and see you guys in the next one.